Welcome back to another Fallout video on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be checking out which suit of endgame power armor is the best to use in Fallout 76 in 2023. That's right, we're going to be putting the T-65 power armor, the Union power armor, and the Hellcat power armor on a head-to-head, -head, and I suppose there's a third head in there, battle to see which is the best for you to use in the wasteland. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty, so I figured before we jump into the testing part, we should probably quickly talk about how you can get each suit, and what really sets these particular suits apart from all the other base game power armor sets. And what do I mean by base game? Well, suits of power armor that are not obtained through DLC or expansions. And bear in mind, all DLC and expansions are free for everyone in Fallout 76. So it's not a pay to win thing, just in case that's what you're thinking. With the T-65, this suit is only obtainable after you've completed the Wastelander storyline. And once you've completed it, you can purchase each piece along with all of its mods for gold bullion from regs in Vault 79. The Union power armor was originally only obtainable through the City of Steel Season 10 scoreboard. However, you can now purchase each piece along with all of its mods for roughly 120 stamps each from Giuseppe's inventory in the White Springs Refuge. And on a side note, you can also be rewarded with random mods for the suit by completing expedition missions. And finally, the Hellcat Power Armor is only obtainable once you've completed the Steel Rain storyline with the Brotherhood of Steel. And for you new players to Fallout 76, you will need to complete both the Steel Dawn and Steel Rain quest lines in order to obtain it. So make sure you head over to Fort Atlas and get questing. Now, in regards to what sets these suits apart from not only the base game suits of armor, but also from each other, is not only their resistance stats, but also their unique built-in effects. Minus the T-65 suit of Power Armor, which unfortunately doesn't come with any unique effects, the Hellcat comes with the unique effect of reducing ballistic damage by 2% with each piece, and stacking them together gives you a 12% ballistic damage reduction. The Union Power Armor, on the other hand, comes with the unique effect of giving you a plus 75 in carry weight when all six pieces are equipped. And bear in mind, that's not stacked, so that won't be giving you an extra 450 pounds in carry weight. However, it also gives you plus 150 in poison resistance with all six pieces equipped, and again, that's not stacked together. Now, what we'll do is we'll quickly bring up the stats on each suit of armor so we can see how each suit compares to each other. And as you can see, the T-65 gives you 715 damage resistance, 580 energy resistance, and 530 radiation resistance. The Hellcat gives you 586 damage resistance, 430 energy resistance, and 380 radiation resistance. And finally, the Union Power Armor gives you 635 damage resistance, 150 poison resistance, 405 energy resistance, and 325 radiation resistance. So, overall, we can see that still to this day, the T-65 outshines everything else when it comes to the overall resistance stats, but is it truly the best suit to use, though? Well, the thing you need to keep in mind is that when it comes to any suit of power armor you wear in the game, power armor will give you a 40% damage reduction. So, to put it simply, regardless of which suit you wear, every suit of power armor is good. But on top of that, the other main contributing factor comes down to your build. Personally, and for a long time now, I've mainly ran with a low health build. And before you think I'm about to say low health is best, no, I'm not going to say that, because at the end of the day, playing this game depends on your playstyle and personal choice. So if you run full health, then great. Low health, well, that's also great. But on the other hand, sometimes you need to face facts and look at the stats, and see which builds and effects outperform everything else. But today, we're not looking at damage output, we're looking at damage taken, and what can keep you alive long enough. Now, in order to conduct these tests, we do need to put together a build, because obviously, when you're out in the wasteland, you will have a build together. And also, another contributing fact is, is that you probably will have legendary effects on your pieces of power armor. Now, in order to conduct these tests and to make sure that we have a level playing field across the board, we're not going to have any legendary effects attached to any sets of our power armor. So each piece, the likes of T-65, Union Power Armor, and Hellcat, each of these suits of power armor will not have any legendary effects effects, but obviously we'll go over that in a little bit. Now, when it comes to the build, this build here, you've probably seen it in many of my videos where I've put together heavy gunner builds. This is a low health heavy gunner build. So the main cards, obviously, when it comes to any heavy gunner build is obviously the likes of DPS cards and damage output and obviously damage reduction. But we're not going to be focusing on the damage output per cards, the likes of expert heavy gunner, heavy gunner. We're not looking at that. We are going to be having the likes of blocker. We also have the likes of life giver. We also have fireproof in there suppressor. 
Razor, Tenderizer. We also have the likes of Dodgy, and of course, we also have Ricochet. All of these cards being damage reduction power cards, and obviously one of the main things as well with a low health build is the likes of Nerd Rage, because obviously with Nerd Rage, while below 20% health, you will gain 40 damage resist, 20% increased damage, and 15% AP regen. So obviously, look, when it comes to those particular stats that we just took a look at there, obviously Nerd Rage is going to boost up that damage resistance. So if you don't have Nerd Rage, and of course, look, if you are looking at your stats in terms of a full health build, the damage resistance on each piece will be a little bit lower. But the main thing I want to look at as well today is, and the main card we're actually going to have on, is this card right here, Electric Absorption. I firmly believe even with this particular issue that is going on at the moment with the likes of energy damage being dealt by NPCs, I firmly believe that Electric Absorption is a prime, like pretty much a necessary perk card to have on your build when it comes to, you know, if you are going to be running the likes of Power Armor, because obviously, as you can see here, you have a 20% chance for energy damage, will recharge your Power Armor's Fusion Core, and also as well, it will restore your lost health. So if you're trying to run through those silos, and obviously, as you will see here in the footage in a little bit we will be actually testing out in the likes of silos against laser turrets and robots obviously when it comes to energy damage that they deal that will actually have a chance to restore your health so you will actually have a really good chance to get through the likes of those silos and obviously dealing with enemies that are dealing energy damage now another legendary perk card that i have on here is power armor reboot it is a great card to have on when it comes to wearing power armor because obviously as you can see here you will have a 40 percent chance to auto revive with full health if you're downed in power armor. Moving on from that and just to make sure that everything is above board and as I mentioned a little bit earlier when we were looking at our perk cards with each suit of power armor that we will be using we don't have any legendary effects. The only thing that I have on each suit of power armor is the likes of the uh, calibrated shocks which will obviously just increase our carry weight by plus 50 and also as well the main thing when it comes to a low health build and especially a low health power armor build I have on the emergency protocol calls mod because that will actually reduce your damage by a further 50% and also as well it will increase your movement speed by plus 25% so pretty much while you're below 20% health and power armor you will have these particular effects that will kick in and I honestly believe when it comes to any low health power armor build emergency protocols is definitely a mod that you need to attach now obviously people have personal preference they like to use jetpacks but obviously look as you can see here I do have on the emergency protocols mod again Again, look this is on my Hellcat I'll take the Hellcat away and then what we'll do is we will bring out the T65 just to make sure that again everything is above board again as you can see there I only have the calibrated shocks mod in and again I have the emergency protocols mod and lastly we will be looking at the Union power armor so let me take that out here real quick so there we go we'll put that down there and also as well again we only have the calibrated mods and also as well the emergency protocols mod and finally, when it comes to the build, these are the mutations that I'm currently running with my build. Now, obviously, every mutation is going to have their own particular effects, and they will affect any particular sort of power armor build or any build in general in their own particular ways. For example, Empath, as you can see there, plus 6% damage taken, and then minus 25% team damage taken. So obviously, in order for this to, to work and in order for this to proc, we are going to be on a team. Now, also as well, as you can see, I also have the likes of Scaly Skin, so minus 12 an AP, plus 50 damage resistance, and then plus 50 in energy resistance. Similar to how I mentioned with the likes of the Nerd Rage perk card, obviously they will affect the stats as well on each suit of power armor, so this will be taken into effect as well. But obviously with every single one of my build videos that I provide here on the channel, I will always make sure and include in this video as well a link in the description below to all the mutations that I'm currently running and also as well to my mutations guide where you can actually find out how and where to get each of these particular mutations. So just to bear all of this in mind while I'm actually conducting these tests. Now, with the build and the mods out of the way, that finally brings us to the testing stage of this video. In order to run these tests, I decided that we needed to set up some parameters so that each suit can go up against the same amount of enemies and receive the same amount of damage. So with that, I decided to test out four different variables of damage, energy, ballistic, poison, and radiation, which inherently makes up the defining traits of each suit of armor. For our energy tests, and because energy and fire damage at the moment is considerably higher, 
fire because of the issue surrounding energy damage dealt by NPCs and enemies, we'll be conducting our test in one of the missile silos and letting the laser turrets and robots do their thing. For our ballistic tests, we'll be heading down over to West Tech and let the super mutants have their time in the spotlight. For our poison tests, we'll be making way down to Quarry 3 and letting the Mylar Queen spit her lovely shower of poison all over us. And finally, for our radiation tests, we'll be heading down to the Federal Disposal Field HC21 workshop and standing in the pools of radiation barrels and soaking up some rays. Now, it's understandable that during a play session, you might not always come across these specific damage attributes, but of course, we're going to test them anyway because that's why we're here. So with that, let's get testing. Alrighty, so we're down here at Site Charlie. We're in the missile silo and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing out the laser turrets and the robots. So we're starting here at the T-65 and also as well, I do have a stopwatch here in front of me just to see how long it actually takes for each suit to be taken down from the turrets and also the robots. Now, I will also try and provide it here on screen as well, so we'll try and provide that. But let's start off here with the likes of T-65 and we're going to start the stopwatch now. So there we go. Let's see how long it takes for it to go down. And again, as you can see, we're at roughly 20% health and it's still going. And it looks like I took roughly about eight seconds, eight to nine seconds for that to be taken down. And obviously Power Armor Reboot did proc there as well, which did bring us back initially. So let's move on to the Hellcat. Now, here we are with the Hellcat. And what we're going to do is we're going to reset that timer and we're going to go now. So there we go. Let's see exactly how long it takes. And that was actually a lot quicker. That went down in roughly five seconds. Five seconds it took for that to go down. So, so far the T-65 a little bit better when it comes to the energy resistance. Now, let's move on to the Union Power Armor. And finally, here we are with the Union Power Armor. So let's start the clock there now and let's see how long it takes. Oh, we're good. And it's going back up. And there we go. So that took roughly about nine and a half seconds. So a little bit better than the T-65. So uh, yeah, there you go. It looks like Union Power Armor as of now, it looks like a little bit better in terms of uh, the running for the best power armor. So let's move on to our next resistance stat, which is going to be ballistic damage. Now, here we are over at West Tech with the T-65. Now, real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the Super Mutant Suicider. We're going to quickly get rid of him. So what we'll do is we'll go there, we'll get rid of him. And then also as well, we're just going to quickly get rid of the dogs because we're here to mainly test out the ballistic, uh, ballistic and energy. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the stopwatch there now. So let's go. Now, the one thing to remember with each of these suits of power armor, I'm going to give them roughly about a minute each because obviously, you know, with each set of power armor, they could be standing here a lot longer than usual. So I'm going to give these roughly about a minute each. But as you can see with the T-65 already, we are tanking a lot of damage there. And obviously compared to the likes of the missile silos, the missile silos were primarily energy damage that we were receiving. But as you can see there, all of my perk cards are procking as well. We've got the likes of Ricochet procking in there. And of course, again, look, as you can see, ballistic damage, energy damage, it's all been uh, it's all been soaked up there. And it's it's taken a while. It's taken a while. Like currently at the moment now on my stopwatch, we're at roughly about 41, 42 seconds. And we're still uh, we're still tanking that. So if each suit of power armor can pass this test, then I think we're off to we're, we're off to a good start here. So let's go. Let's see exactly can we hit the minute mark? And roughly, we are coming up to a minute, roughly now, I believe. Yeah, there we go. We've hit roughly a minute. So there we go. The T-65 can withstand the likes of ballistic damage and energy damage. And as you can see there, we are taking a lot of damage from a lot of these enemies. So there we go. Let's move on to the Hellcat. So let's do it. Now we're back with the Hellcat. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to reset that clock and we're going to jump back into the middle here just to see how long we can withstand this. So we'll start the clock. Well, there we go. Start it now. So there we go. Stopwatch has started. So there we go. Let's see how long we can take this. And as you can see, we're soaking up that energy damage. Obviously, look, when it comes to the laser turrets and the missile silos, those are, the, the, it's a it's a rapid fire amount of energy damage that you are receiving. So I think so far, again, look, Union Power Armor seems to be doing the best. But obviously, look, we'll test it out here very shortly. And I am kind of looking forward to seeing how we do when it comes to the poison resistance stats. Um, but yeah, look, look at that. There we go. Now, obviously, look, when it comes to Hellcat, this is the best when it comes to ballistic damage. Like, out of all of them so far, Ballistic damage, Hellcat is definitely, personally, my favorite as well when it comes to power armor. But look, we can see. We'll, we'll see if it outshines. We're coming up to roughly about 45, 46 seconds. 
so we're, we're almost at a minute there and as you can see we're we're not going down in any way shape or form we're uh, we're still tanking a lot of that damage there as you can see ballistic and energy coming in and we have hit our minute mark there so there we go the hellcast has passed the minute mark it has passed the test so let's move on to the union power armor and finally here we are with the union power armor so again i'm going to run into the middle here and i'm going to start the stopwatch going to start it now so there we go can it last a full minute with uh, ballistic and energy damage like, I personally feel, especially when it comes to super mutants, like, super mutants are one of the main sort of enemies that you will go up against on your, you know, day-to-day -day wasteland adventures. You know, like, when you're coming into West Tech, you're obviously going to be grinding super mutants. When it comes to, you know, even daily ops, there's going to be super mutants there. Like, I think super mutants are kind of the one of the main enemies that you'll, you'll come up against. So I think this is definitely, definitely a fair test. As you can see, Ricochet kicking in there, taking all of that. And I, as you can see, I'm not going down. Like, with each of these suits of power armor, I'm not going down. And especially, as you can see, that is a lot of firepower that we are taking. That's a lot of firepower. And again, the main reason being that I did stop the likes of the Super Mutant Hounds and the Suicider was because of the fact that we are here to test ballistic damage. And we are coming up here to roughly a minute now. We're coming up to it. And there we go. We've hit a minute. So each suit of power armor has passed that test. T-65, Hellcat, and Union power armor has been able to withstand all of that ballistic damage. So there we go. They're, they're, they're all passing the, uh, the check mark on that one. So let's move on to the next one, which is going to be uh, definitely an interesting one which is going to be the poison resistance so let's go alrighty so we're down here at quarry 3 so this is one of the locations where you can find many a scorch beast queen so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these mile lurks here real quick hopefully yeah there she is she's out of the water there now so let's see how long it will actually take us to be taken down by the mile lurk queen and she is level 100 so we'll try and get her out of the water there Try and get her to fling her poison damage at us. So let, let's uh, let's start the stopwatch when she's kind of kind of looking at us. So I'll, I'll put on my flashlight so she can actually see me here. So there we go. I've hit her again. I've hit her again. So there we go. We'll start the stopwatch now. So there you go. That is going down. We don't want her to hit us. We don't want her to hit us. We just want her to to, to fling all that poison. Shower us in your poison. Don't don't hit us. Don't hit us. Keep on going. Come on. Just. Yep, there you go. There you go. So that took roughly about 15 to 16 seconds. 16, 15 to 16 seconds for that to actually, uh, for, for the T-65 to go down. So let's do it. Let's move on to the Hellcat. Now, we're here with the Hellcat, and we'll try and find... There she is. There's the Mylar Queen. So again, what we'll do is we'll start the stopwatch when she is actually looking at us. So we'll get her attention. So there we go. So she's now looking at us. So let's start it there. So let's see how long it actually takes us for, for to go down. So there we go. We've taken the first bit of poison damage there. Take another bout. Come on, spray me. Spray me in your poison. And we're back up again with our power armor reboot. Here we go. That kicked in. And that took roughly about 17 seconds. 17 seconds. A little bit longer. A little bit longer than the T-65. So now one of my personal favorites because obviously this next suit is going to be more aimed towards the likes of poison resistance we're going to check out the union power armor so let's go Alrighty, so here we go with the union power armor again we're going to make sure to start the stopwatch when she looks at us so let's go now let's see how long this can take now in theory this should take a lot longer because this is designed to take on poison damage as you can see it is tanking a good bit of it there hopefully now it can outshine the hellcat it's taking a little bit longer Let's go, and there we go, we're down. That took 19 seconds. So on paper, yes, it actually does exactly what it's supposed to. It pretty much, you can survive that roughly for about maybe another second or more, but that looks like 19 seconds. So that definitely outshone pretty much the Hellcat and the T-65. So let's move on to our next and pretty much our final uh, damage resistance which is going to be radiation resistance so let's go alrighty so here we go we're down at the federal disposal field with the t65 now i've gone ahead and i've made sure to clear out all of this workshop from super mutants and anything that might sort of affect this particular test so what we're going to do is we're going to walk on in there and we're going to see how long we can last in terms of radiation resistance with each suit of power armor now obviously one of the main reasons again why i'm choosing this location is because obviously you know when it comes to you know 
world boss events, like if you're taking on the Scorch Beast Queen or even a Colossal Problem or, you know, even the Ultra Sight Titan, you are going to come into contact with radiation. You are going to, you know, have some sort of experience during that particular event inside of either a nuke zone or outside of a nuke zone, but you're going to have radiation damage that will obviously be inflicted on your suit of power armor. So let's go on in here and see how long we can last and let's start the test now. So there we go. Let's see how long we can last here with our T65. So we're in the, we're in the bout of it there. As you can see, our rad meter is at four. So that is pretty much the max amount of rads that we are taking here and kind of similar to what we can get inside of a nuke zone. As you can see, we're, we're still taking that pretty well. It is going up. Our, our meter there now is at 10 in terms of our HP. We are coming up to 10%. And our rad meter is still at 4. I'm literally standing in the pool of water here at the moment. So I should be taking the, the most amount of radiation here. So here we go. We're still going. And we're coming up to roughly about 38, 39 seconds now. We have less than 5% HP. How long can we take this? Can we still keep on going? Can we hit the minute mark? Oh, I don't think so. We're about to croak it, I think. Oh, is it going to do it? Is it going to do it? There we go. So 54 seconds. It took 54 seconds for the T65 to go down with radiation damage. So what we'll do is we'll move on to the Hellcast and see how that fears out against radiation damage. Let's go. Now we're back with the Hellcat, so let's see if it can beat the T65. So remember, the T65 was roughly 54 or 55 seconds. Let's see if the Hellcat can do a little bit better. So again, we're in the exact same spot that we were last time, and we're going to see exactly what it can do. Now, obviously, as you can see there, the rad meter is a tiny bit higher than what the T65 was. It's just a tiny bit above four. And again, on paper, when it comes to the damage, energy, and resistance of, uh, well, the T65 in terms of radiation resistance, that on paper is pretty much outshines every single suit that has the best amount of radiation resistance out of the ones that we've tested here today. So, so far, this looks like this is going to down a little bit quicker. We were at 54 seconds with T65. What is this going to do? I'd say this is going to be roughly 40 something seconds anyway. Let's see. We're almost there anyway. Let's go. Oh, and we are down at 46 seconds. So 46 seconds it took for the Hellcat to go down. Now, again, obviously, the stopwatch that you can see on screen might be a little bit off in terms of seconds on the stopwatch that I have here, but we will make sure to round it up to get the average time for each of these ones. But anyway, look, let's move on to the final one, which will be the Union Power Armor. Let's go. And finally, here we go. We are here with the Union Power Armor. Now, on paper, this has less radiation resistance than the Hellcat and the T-65. So let's see how long this can actually fare up. So let's start the timer now. So there we go. Let's see how long this can take. And again, this, the rad meter, as you can see, is just a tiny bit above four. Tiny bit above four. So let's see, will it be, uh, will it do a little bit better than the Hellcat and the T-65? It's going down a lot quicker. Like we're already there at roughly 15, 16 seconds. So this looks to be going down a little bit, a little bit quicker. But again, look, it did outshine when it did come to the poison resistance test. We know that it is obviously the best for that. Let's see, will it uh, outshine the, uh, the, the Hellcat for roughly 30 seconds now, or 32 seconds, should I say? We're again, we're a little bit above four. We're on less than 5% HP. And that is going to go down in, let's see, 40. Wow, 45 seconds. That took roughly about 45 seconds. Here on my stopwatch, it was roughly about 45.9. Again, look, I'll make sure to compare on screen. But again, Hellcat came out on 46 seconds and on top came the T65. So in terms of radiation, T65 won that one. And it looks like Union Power Armor lost that one just by a second, roughly about a second or two behind the Hellcat. But uh, yeah, I think, look, we'll, we'll definitely make sure to see exactly which one is the best. So let's hop on over and check and see which one is the best. So we've come to that part of the video where you want to know which suit of power armor is the best. And obviously from each of our tests, there was one suit. And at this stage, you can probably tell performed the best. And you guessed it, the Union Power Armor. In each of the categories we tested, the Union Power Armor managed to come out on top, minus the radiation test, where it was actually the worst out of the three suits. So obviously on paper, the Union Power Armor is definitely the contender to take the crown. However, in my own opinion, and this is going off of my own personal day-to-day -day experience, 
using this particular suit, I firmly believe that the suit of armor I'd recommend for you to use and invest in is the Hellcat Power Armor. I firmly believe that this is the best suit that you can use in 2023 and also going into next year, unless Bethesda decide to release a new suit of armor with the Atlantic City expansion or possibly a DLC next year that might outshine it. But I mainly believe this because once you take into account legendary effects such as O-Readers or Bolstering and manage to roll a full suit of Hellcat with those particular effects, and on top of that with its built-in unique effect of 12% ballistic damage reduction, this suit in my own opinion is incredible. I know when you look at the stats from each of the tests that we conducted that it didn't win in any of those categories, but you need to take into consideration that it was only a few seconds behind in our poison test by roughly one or two seconds. It was roughly one or two seconds ahead of the Union Power Armor in the radiation test, and yes, I know it was the worst overall in the energy category, but these are just seconds in the difference. And to some, seconds can mean everything, but when you take into account the right build, mutations, and legendary effects, this suit of armor, in my own opinion, is the best overall. My main take from each of these tests is that each suit we tested has its own unique effects which makes it stand out from the others. For example, T65 won in the radiation test because on paper we knew it would. The Union Power Armor won in the poison test because again on paper we knew it would. And finally when it came to the energy test, there was roughly a half a second to almost a second or two in the difference between the T65 and the Union Power Armor. But when it comes to the suit that I take into battle, well again, it's the Hellcat Power Armor. But let me know your thoughts in the comments which suit you thought was best as I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions and I'd love to know which suit you personally use during your wasteland adventures and why. But on the other hand, if you found today's video enjoyable, consider clicking that subscribe button for more Fallout content like this and so you never miss out on any videos that I publish. I want to say a massive thank you to all of our members and subscribers here on the channel as it means the world to me that you enjoy my content and the work that I produce. For our Bethesda and Fallout fans, if you find yourself shopping on the Bethesda store and would like to support the channel, you can use my creator code. BT Starfield 92 to receive 20% off of your purchase at the checkout. And if you'd like to support the channel and what I do here in a more personal way, consider checking out my merch store, which has an array of t-shirts, mugs, and other pineapple-related merch, which I'll leave in a link in the description of this video. And lastly, to you, the viewer, the person who stumbled upon this video, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, Vault Dwellers, thank you so much for checking out today's video. And as always, stay safe out there in the wasteland. Welcome to Vault 93, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.